Good evening, Garden City. I'd like to call to order our regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, October 24th at 7 p.m. Our first order of business is our opening ceremony, which consists of the national anthem, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence for those service members that have given their lives while defending our country. We have a special guest tonight that's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, the student of the month from uh, Farmington Elementary, sixth grader Jack Hathaway. So, um, would everybody please stand? Thank you. Please be seated. Let's give a round of applause for Jack Hathaway, student of the month, Farmington Elementary. Thank you, Jack. You did a great job. Okay, Ms. Bettis, uh, you take the roll, please. Mayor Walker. Here. Council Member Squires. Here. Council Member Kerwin. Here. Council Member Lynch. Here. Council Member Keene. Here. Council Member McCarge. Here. Council Member Jacobs. Here. Okay, we'll move on to item four, approval of the agenda as presented. Mayor. Council Member Lynch. I move for the approval of the agenda for Monday, October 24th, 2016 as presented. Support. Supported by Council Member Squires. Any comments from the table? From the general public? Ms. Bettis. Council Member Lynch. Aye. Council Member Squires. Aye. Council Member Jacobs. Aye. Council Member McCarge. Aye. Council Member King. Aye. Council Member Kerwin. Aye. Mayor Walker. Aye. Motion passes 7-0. Move on to item five, community events. Uh, I think we have executive director of the DDA, Kim Dold, has got some uh, good news for us tonight. <laughs> Mr. Squires from the DDA. Okay. Good evening. We're going to talk for just a moment about the chili cook-off one final time this year. Um, I wanted to give out a few thanks, and if I miss anybody, I do apologize. You're, you're all in my heart. I just, sometimes I, that's why I don't like to do things by name necessarily. But um, first off, I want to give a huge thank you to the uh, DDA staff, Teresa Manuel. She did a fantastic job. Um, she's very detail-oriented, and uh, we are very lucky to have, have her with the DDA. I also wanted to let everyone know that Grindstone Smokehouse in Westland, they were our first place restaurant winners. They were also People's Choice winners, which amounted to $600 in prize money that they contacted us and said, keep it. So that money went back into the pot for our charities. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, 
Um, a couple other uh, thanks. I wanted to thank the Garden City Police Department. They were there uh, kind of making extra crews by the night before when all of our stuff was set up. They were there all during the day for us and also that night while some of the equipment was left. The uh, Garden City Fire Department also working with them. They reviewed our they kind of reviewed our maps this year to make sure that um, everything was was good and that we wouldn't be blocking any fire lanes, that, court, that sort of thing. Um, and of course our city hall workers that came over and, and set up a tent and um, I believe you recruited voters and recycling. and recycling, yes. So, so that worked out well. I wanted to personally thank our judges, Mayor Walker, uh, our city manager and police chief, Bob Murray, we had several city council members. Jay Lee was there, Pam King, Pat McCarge, Jim Kerwin. I hope you all survived that just fine that <laughs> night. <laughs> um, we had Senator Knizek, Commissioner Anderson was there with us. And we also had a few DDA trustees, John Fleming and Steve Valente were both there. I said Pam. I said Pam, didn't I say your name? Yes. Yeah. I thought I did, okay. <laughs> Mark was there cooking chili. He, well, he wasn't a judge. He wasn't um, a judge. <laughs> so I wanted to thank all of our sponsors, all of the volunteers, the vendors, and m most particularly, I would like to thank my friends and family who for several weeks every year leading up to the cook-off and that day allow me to abuse them terribly, uh, especially my husband. <laughs> he agrees. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of them are on their feet. They're there at 7 a.m. in the morning, and they don't stop until the job's done, which, you know, might be 8 o'clock that night. So I want to give everybody, all of them a special thank you. So to move on with the presentation, um, we started this last year in order to try to get more volunteers. We told the volunteers that we would donate to charities of their choice a certain amount of money. It's determined by how much money actually comes in per hour worked. So the following charities were represented, uh, Memorial Elementary, Garden City Rotary, Garden City High School Project Grad, Garden City Kiwanis, Merriman Road Baptist Church Faith Riders, the Autistic School Association, and St. Thomas of the Apostle Parish. In addition to those, we, had, we also had some volunteers that asked for their monies to be donated to the Garden City Goodfellows, the straight farmhouse in our home pantry. Oh, yes. So while we have four charities, those three I just mentioned, plus United Needy Family, that the money from the cook-off is split evenly between them. However, the checks presented tonight will not be the same amounts due to that, mm -hmm. due to the different volunteers. So kind of to get on with that, who do we have first? And if representatives for the Straight Farmhouse and Garden City Museum could come up. You can have them over there. <laughs> so the Straight Farmhouse um, was awarded an initial $3,250 from the proceeds from the cook-off. The additional amount uh, brings it up to $3,795 that's being donated to the Straight Farmhouse. That's fantastic. <laughs> United Needy Family, and the president of United Needy Family, Phil Bacascio. Unfortunately, with United Needy Family, the people on that committee are also all good fellows, so the money went to the good fellows, <laughs> the extra money. So Needy Family uh, did get the $3,250. And if um, Pat Ryback could come up and join us. Wow, that's great. Our home pantry is awarded $3,610. Yeah. Wow. Should buy a 
a little bit of food anyway, huh? Yeah. And then um, Garden City Goodfellows has co-chairs, my husband Jeff Dold and Dave Spatieri. If they could come up and accept the check for Garden City Goodfellows, please. $4,075 to the Garden City Goodfellows. Yeah. It's going to buy a lot of smiles Christmas morning. That's right. And that is, other than a, a group shot here, we're done. So uh, for another year anyway. <laughs> just Great again, work. thank everybody that had anything to do with this, whether you just attended it, just anything, because we cannot do it without all, all of our How volunteers and our residents. As far as people. Pardon me? How were the numbers this year? <laughs> yeah, no, man. no but monetarily, they were about the same as they were last year, so. I just want to say uh, thank you to Kim Dold. Uh, she does a lot of work to make this happen, and Teresa Manuel. Yeah. Okay, next we'll move on to uh, item six, comments from state and county officials. I see we have Commissioner Anderson here. Does he have anything for us tonight? Looks like he does. Never known a politician that doesn't like to talk. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I uh, <clears throat> want to congratulate the uh, success of the uh, chili cook-off. I just tried to total it in my head, and it's over $14,000, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Almost 15000 mm -hmm. That's that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal to all these good causes in the in the city of Garden City. That's it's great. Uh, <clears throat> real quickly, wanted to remind everyone about uh, make a senior smile. Allison, I appreciate over that my when I'm not here, you've been able to bring it up and remind <laughs> folks. It's Saturday, November fifth, uh, eight a.m. at the uh, Maplewood Center. Uh, volunteers are coming through, but certainly more are needed. Uh, now we only need cooperation of the leaves to start dropping. And I don't know if any of you have any power to do that, but Mayor, maybe you can put in a special request. Sure, I'll, I'll make it happen. <laughs> and I'm wearing a pink tie today. One of the reasons is that this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, I'd like to encourage everyone to consider ordering a breast cancer awareness license plate, which I sponsored when I was in the State Senate. And all the money from the sale of, and the proceeds of that license plate uh, go for uh, screening and treatment for those that are uninsured or underinsured. Uh, and all that money, like I said, goes to a great cause. And it's accessible to anyone affected by it. And as we know, in rare cases, men are even affected by breast cancer. Uh, and uh, that is accessible all over the state of Michigan uh, for care uh, for those that are affected by it. Um, and you can, if you're interested, you can go on the Secretary of State website and you can find out the information of how to get one of those license plates or go to Secretary of State locations. And I think we're going to have a portable 
uh, Secretary of State here for the shredding day, uh, which is on November 5th also, right? It starts around noon or something like 11 o'clock? It starts at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. And so folks can come out to there, and I believe they'll have the forms and be able to do it for them there, order the plate. And you don't have to wait till your license plate expires either. A lot of people think they do, and, and then by the time their plate comes around, sometimes they forget to do it. So appreciate the uh, support for that. Uh, also, Cherry Hill is progressing, although much slower than we'd all like. Uh, it is finally happening, and uh, so hopefully they'll get quite a bit done before uh, we start seeing uh, snow uh, that's up to our knees. <laughs> Thank you all so much, and uh, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item seven, petitions and communications. We have none tonight. Move on to item eight, uh, public hearing. The first one is uh, 8A, the sidewalk program, <coughs> special assessment role. Anybody wishing to speak? On this, please come to the podium and state your name and your comments. Okay, I'll ask one more time. Anybody wishing to speak on the uh, sidewalk special assessment? Thank you. No, who's paying for this? The residents that had their sidewalks repaired. The sidewalk. Who paid for that? my right now. The what do we do? I'm trying to answer you. It's the residents that had their sidewalks repaired. They had their choice to do it themselves or the, our contractor, that, uh, which they got a better deal on. And now um, we got to <coughs> assess them for the, for the amount of footage that they had done. They got uh, down on, on the uh, dairy and bell, uh, on the south side of bell, no sidewalk at all. Yep. No sidewalk at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, seeing none, I'll close that um, public hearing and I'll open up the next one for Hubbard reconstruction uh, necessity and to prepare for a special assessment for Hubbard. Anybody wishing to speak on Hubbard Avenue? Okay, I'll ask one more time for the Hubbard reconstruction. Okay, seeing none, we'll close that public hearing. Move on to item nine, the consent agenda. Mayor. Council Member Lynch. I move for the approval of the consent agenda, items 9A, one through four. Support. Support from Council Member Squires. Any discussions from the table? From the general public? Ms. Bettis. Council Member Lynch? Aye. Council Member Squires? Aye. Council Member Jacobs? Aye. Council Member McCarr? Aye. Council Member King? Aye. Council Member Kerwin? Aye. Mayor Walker? Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Move on to item uh, B, the study session. What's Council's wish on B1? CC. And B2? CC. Okay, we'll move on to item C, uh, C1, special assessment sidewalk program. Mayor? Council Member Squire. I move to approve the following resolution confirming special assessment roll number 4228, 2016 sidewalk project. Support. Support, Support from Council Member uh, King. Uh, any discussion from the table? From the general public? Ms. Bettis? Council Member Squires? Aye. Council Member King? Aye. Council Member Jacobs? Aye. Council Member McCarge? Aye. Council Member Lynch? Aye. Council Member Kerwin? Aye. Mayor Walker? Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Item C2 Special Assessment of Hubbard uh, Reconstruction. Necessity to prepare for Mayor? special assessment for. Council Member Lynch. I move to adopt the following resolution directing the preparation of a special assessment role for 2016 Hubbard reconstruction. Can I hear a second? Support. Support from Council Member Jacobs. Discussion from the table? From the general public? That's who's paying for that? This is the residents that live alongside of Hubbard Avenue that was just reconstructed. We gotta prepare the assessment now. We have to have two public hearings. We had the first one tonight and uh, we gotta prepare uh, the numbers. 
Anybody else? Ms. Bettis? Uh, Council Member Lynch. Aye. Council Member Jacobs. Aye. Council Member McCarch. Aye. Council Member King. Aye. Council Member Kerwin. Aye. Council Member Squires. Aye. Mayor Walker. Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Move on to item 10 public comments for items that were not on the agenda tonight. If you wish to speak, please come to the podium, state your name, and there is a five minute time limit. Anybody wishing to speak? Mr. Buckner. Al Buckner, 1516 Middle Belt. I went on the city website to look for the uh, <clears throat> approved version of the 2016-2017 budget, and all I found was the proposed budget. So it'd be nice if we can get that on there so I don't have to go to the state website to get it. Um, a couple of things um, I'd like to bring up is the fact that uh, one is uh, I'd like to appreciate, uh, thank um, the city for getting our street once again patched for the third time this year. Um, won't be long the way we're patching it that we can probably just name the city street patches because it's unreal that you can't go no more than 10 miles an hour down our streets. And I know we keep hearing year after year the mayor talk about his, his city speeches that, you know, he wants the roads fixed. Well, in eight years, how many has he gotten fixed? Um, and we keep hearing there's no money for it, but yet we hear and we see seven old votes up here for over almost $700,000 for a parking lot um, at the city park. And then if you're gonna do something like that, when you think that you would take care of city hall and the police station, cause that's where you make the bulk of your money from. Um, it just seems like there's no thought in what we do. There's things that we want done, uh, so self-centered things that we feel that's best and really is not. The other thing I want to talk about tonight is the foreclosures. Uh, I mentioned a little bit last time I was here that the city sort of learned their lesson and wasn't able to have too much of a pizza party this time because they got their act together and went out and warmed with people. But the 17 homeowners that didn't get warned are paying for it dearly. And I know you got, you're going to have probably people come up after me and it's a big deal. But we know where their heart is. Most likely they set on it. But the fact is, some of these people you put out on the street with kids, single parents, and the thing of it is, if they'd have been warned, been given an opportunity, they wouldn't have been this way. Is it left a black eye on Garden City government? Yeah, I know you say all cities do that, but why do we have to follow the course? Why couldn't we have been different? Why couldn't this have been handled different? It wasn't. And I guess that, you know, in the long run, the ones that were made the backroom deals, the one that caused this to happen, will have to pay for it. And I know some of you are smirked about it, made slight comments. But you know what? It just reminds me of one thing. And I often wondered about this when I hear this a lot of times in church. God said that he had to enlarge hell. But now I think I know why. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Mr. Jones? I'm sure it's gonna be mentioned at the council table when you get to your comments, but just in case, I didn't wanna leave it out, this Thursday is another big event <laughs> in Garden City, our trunk or treat. Hopefully the rain will be gone by time that starts. Makeup day is Saturday if, if the weather's too bad on Thursday. But we have like, last count I heard, 60 trunks and well over a thousand people committed and a couple thousand more have shown interest in it. So it could be a great event. Bring out your kids, your grandkids, your neighbor's kids. Anybody, tw kids 12 or under, should have a good time in a safe environment with a lot of uh, extra entertainment taking place. And it'd be another example of the community coming together for a good time and for its citizens. 
Thank you. Anybody else? Kevin Hunt, Garden City. I just wanted to straighten a couple things out that I know mayor and council, the city manager have covered over and over again, but we'll try another education process for our buddy that just ran out the door again. Uh, number one, I go down his street all the time, 40 miles an hour. It's 15, 16 middle bell, correct? We've heard it over and over again. You can go 40, 50 miles an hour down that road. You don't wanna do 50 if police chief's in town, but <laughs> no problem at all. I don't see any potholes on that road. Something he needs to understand. I've said it before, council said it before, mayor said it before, everybody does, but for some reason his ears don't work, it doesn't stay in his head, I'm not sure. We have a budget that the state gives us so much money towards roads. They use so much for county roads. We get so much for our own city-owned roads. The parking lots are completely different. You better get that budget up there for him so that he can read it doesn't matter whether it's a proposed one or it's the real one or what it is, it doesn't make any sense to them. But if we had it up there, maybe you could read it again because there is definitely a big difference between the roads and the parking lots or the building maintenance, whatever it is. He needs to go and educate himself. As far as the foreclosures, from everything I've seen and every court they've been thrown out of so far, this city did everything correctly. They were notified over and over and over again over a three year period of time from the county wasn't the city's job to go out and knock on their doors. You guys went over and above this time. Didn't need to do it. They've been tossed out of every single court out there. Why does this keep going on? Uh, if we didn't have a person like that and the one in the background that is uh, one of his puppets, you wouldn't have to spend extra hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on the frivolous lawsuits. Maybe if they'd quit that, we'd have some more money in the budget to be able to do something else in the city. Maybe we could squeeze some money out for a sidewalk or his road, which no, I, I understand the roads, it is an amount of money that's fixed that we have to work with each year and we're staying within our budgets and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Ms. Bettis, you got anything for us tonight? Um, yes. First of all, I've um, lost a, uh, election worker who had worked with us uh, to make sure that we got um, good flowing, um, high, fast moving elections in our community. Her name was Margaret um, Hassel Hunt, and sometimes they called her Lucy, and she was just a joy to work with, and we lost her late last month, and I just wanted to send my condolences to her family and just let them know how much she was appreciated, especially now during election time, because we can't do it without those um, election workers who making sure everybody is getting through the line as fast as humanly possible. So speaking of elections, of course, we've got election coming up two weeks now from tomorrow. And I uh, just wanna make sure that if anybody needs an absentee ballot, that they can get that uh, absentee ballot application off of our website, or you can come into our office, or you can call our office, <coughs> and we will mail one to you. The Saturday before election, November 5th, we will be open from nine to two, as will every clerk in the state of Michigan. Um, we'll be available there for emergency um, absentee ballot applications. Um, and if you uh, need something and you didn't find out, a lot of people, you know, I've got a hospital or out of town trip that they didn't find out until the last minute, come on in, you can, we can get, you taking care of and make sure that you are able to vote and, and be a participant in this election. Um, so please come on up. I have absentee ballot applications here if anybody needs one right now. Um, also, on uh, but that Saturday, in addition to election being open for election business, it is Community Shred Day. So yay, so bring all of your secure documents that need to be secure. We have a mobile shredder on site. Also, the mobile secretary of state, as, as, uh, as Commissioner Anderson mentioned, will be there. You can get your license. You can get your breast cancer awareness plate. You can get your tabs. You can get um, any of those things. You can change your address. Um, you can do all of those things. It's really convenient. And like I said, your birthday doesn't have to be for six months, and you can still do it. 
Um, so it'll be right here in the parking lot. And we would ask that if you would be kind enough to bring your non-perishable um, food items so that we can give those to those families who might have a need here in Garden City for our home pantry. And I appreciate that. Also, our uh, DPS director has asked me to mention that DTE, that we just want to thank DTE Energy uh, for providing a grant and Relief Michigan for coordinating a volunteer effort uh, last Saturday at City Park. They donated 15 trees of various species and they were planted adjacent to the new parking lot and they're going to go to grow into beautiful ornamental trees and they were just gorgeous and that was a grant that was obtained by our DPS director and so it was a, a very nice addition to our city at no cost to the citizens. And also we just want to give a um, shout out to Dr. Ali Hussein. And he is the owner of the new urgent care facility on Ford Road, just west of Merriman. And he went a little uh, above and beyond what was required of him. And with this landscaping in front of the new business and the flowers out there, I'm told, are beautiful. So I'm going to go see him. And uh, the director wanted to make sure that he um, acknowledged that effort. Appreciate it. We love it when our citizen, corporate citizens um, participate in our community in, in such a beautiful way. Um, my boss says hi. Um, he's coming back as soon as he can. Thank you. Councilmember Jacobs. Uh, just a couple things. One, hopefully we see all the uh, kids and everybody out at the trunk or treat. Uh, I missed last year, but I heard it was uh, really good. So I'm looking forward to that this year. And once again, I'd like to thank Kim Dold and uh, Teresa Manuel for the chili cook-off. Uh, I wasn't a judge, but I was involved with one of the teams, so they wouldn't let me vote for some reason. And uh, <laughs> but uh, the money's raised for the charity is great, and I think that's uh, you know every time we ask our community to step up, they do, and I think it's it's just great, and the work they put in is just phenomenal. So thank you. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you, Councilmember Lynch. Yes. Um, first of all, Hubbard Street. It took us a long time to get to where we are, but driving down Hubbard, what a remarkable difference. And I can't wait to see it finally finished. I know they're still doing some dirt filling in and some sidewalk things like that. Approaches. Yes, the sidewalks. I know it's been a, it's a long going project, but it's well worth every minute that it took to finally be able to drive down that street. And, you know, I hope the same will be said of Cherry Hill. It's taken a long time to get those two outside lanes, but they're fixing some of the base. Hopefully by the time they get the black top on it, all of us that drive that two mile section will be very happy that it's done. And then one other thing is I know that all of council received a letter over the past week from, I'm going to assume just because she has beautiful writing, I'm assuming it's a she, it's a, one of our seniors. And she brought up something in the letter that she was disappointed that we, as the city, paid money to resurface the parking lot at the high school. And I just wanted to let her know, as well as other people, the high school parking lot was done from the Garden City Public Schools. It's not the city of Garden City. I know we do a lot of parking lots and uh, streets and things like that, but in this particular case, the Garden City Public Schools thought they needed to be done, and that's why they got done. So if you want to say something to them, please feel free. And if I would have had your name on the back of the letter, I would have given you a call myself, but you didn't sign the letter. So I just wanted to make that known so that she knew we read the letter. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Squire. Uh, just one thing. I wanted to thank Mr. Roney uh, for keeping in touch with the residents as the Hubbard project was going on um, and keeping them happy. So I know a couple of had concerns and said something to me. And you were there and spoke with them personally and took care of it. So just a great job. Thank you. And that's all I have. Thank you. Councilmember Kerwin. Uh, just another thanks to uh, Mrs. Dold and the <clears throat> entire staff. That was a, a great, uh, <clears throat> great time. And uh, I would say the chili was pretty good. I, 
I watched Mrs. King eat about 30 bowls. So <laughs> 15, I guess. But anyway, it was very good, and I'm, I'm surprised. It was, it's, it's a lot of money and that all of the organizations can really use. And uh, I think you ask on uh, a head count, you don't have a clue. Yeah. Got to be a few thousand <laughs> people there anyway. Yes, so, yes. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, I think that was very good, and I thank you to everybody concerned. Um, <coughs> also, try to shop local, do your best, because we do sell a lot of different things in our community. And also, watch it's getting darker earlier, and then it will, in the next few weeks, get dark very early. But watch out for the kids out there. Other than that, that's all I have time there. Thank you. Councilmember King? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Jack for coming in and doing his little speech up there mm -hmm. with us. I thought it was very nice, and I look forward to seeing children uh, in our, our, uh, our, our meetings. Pardon me. And I think it's good to have them around get a feel for all of this. Um, also, it's um, chili cook-off. Couldn't beat it. It was wonderful. You went way over this time, and I think it was absolutely perfect. Thank you very much for everybody who was involved in it. Um, other than that, oh, I do have one question, though. Um, gentleman that came up obviously had a, a grouchy kind of attitude about the budget not being on the website. It is on the website. I believe it is, but I, I'll check it, it out. Okay, we probably want to look that up and make sure it is for him especially. The gentleman has my number. He yes, I'm sure he does. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Right, now we're very good. Okay, that's all I have to say. Councilmember Uh The landscaping near the uh, urgent care is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But right next to it is the Pennzoil, you know, business, yes. and even before the urgent care was done, you know, I always drive past there, and it's like, wow, they have landscapes so nice, and they keep the flowers, and we have a lot of businesses that keep up their their properties, and which is really great. But they, the Pinzoil has just always been a little above and beyond too with the flowers. So now with the two next to each other. Uh, I think that it's a good um, call out to other businesses to, you know, just pump it up a little. So congratulations to both of those businesses. Um, last week I attended the Wayne County Community Development Block Grant Advisory Board meeting, and I am very pleased to report that after a, a year of meetings that were mm, often not very pleasant, uh, but through the year there was a lot of compromises made, mostly really in the last month, and a lot of that has to do with um, the involvement of our county commissioner, Glenn Anderson, the fact that he got involved, got other commissioners involved. Um, our, the resulting, uh, the county is now going to be taking a 10% of the money that was usually went into the communities for the you know block grant programs, um, they they are going to have some large projects, three large projects in the Wayne County area that will be a competitive um, bidding process. Um, but the other 90% will stay in each community. And Garden City uses most most often uses our money to do housing rehab and also to offset some of the cost of the senior uh, citizen staffing. Uh, at the beginning of the year, they wanted the county, it originally planned on taking almost 60%, 50, 55% mm -hmm. of the funding, which would, you know, really is, was really a hard thing for the communities to, to swallow. But again, we got together and it was uh, really amazing. And also, uh, Mr. An uh, Commissioner Anderson, uh, at the last meeting, I, I had a question about one of the items and I kind of questioned him, but he followed up. He came up to the podium and he said, I'd like that in writing. And so along with what we're doing, um, and there's written assurances from the county that what they said is what they're gonna do and we have it all in writing. So uh, Commissioner, thank you. Uh, just one other thing, Mr. Roney, 
the trees, uh, the thank you, that was really great. I drove by there and they, you know, it's gonna be wonderful. I, I was kind of hoping I could get over and help, but unfortunately I was involved with another gardening project. Uh, so that's about it, please be safe. Oh, I know one other thing, Garden City Goodfellows, they got a good check from the chili cook-off, yay. But the Goodfellows have also sent out letters to, into the community asking for donations. Um, you know, if you haven't sent back your check, hey, $5, $10, anything really helps and really adds up. And the more they can do that, the, the, it's a little safer, you know, mailing the check. So my check is in the mail. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, I want to thank uh, Jack Hathaway from Farmington Elementary for helping us with the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, congratulations on being Student of the Month. Uh, we all mentioned the chili cook-off, uh, Kim Dole and Teresa and all the volunteers that make that happen, but we need to thank all the residents that come out and support that. Look at all the thousands of dollars that we just had uh, donated to support Garden City Charities, especially with the holidays coming up, the food pantry, the good fellows, no kid without a Christmas. So um, it's just fantastic that the money that's generated in this community by, uh, by our residents and all the volunteers that we have. Um, it's a great city. Uh, that's all I have. No further business. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Yeah.